Hi, this is Pris, and this is part two, talking about healing and deliverance. And I'm going to start where I ended off. I, as I ended the last one, I was getting um, the baptism in the Spirit, and it was through with prophecy. And I, it was later that I got tongues, and that was through reading um, a book about tongues and the scriptures and and then asking and asking and asking the Lord for it and finally I did I did get it and I had a issue because of being having been Catholic I think of um, thinking that somehow well maybe it has nothing to do with that but I thought somehow God was just gonna take over my mouth and sometimes he does that uh, now the Holy Spirit but at the time, I didn't realize that I could just, you know, start speaking and then God would take over once I, in faith, you know, started. So I finally got tongues and this transformed my life because everything then was more alive. I don't know how else to say it um, in terms of my walk with the Lord and, and I was able to hear his voice more. He started speaking to me in church when we went to the Pentecostal church and um, I saw, sorry for saying and uh, I'm not the best speaker compared to writing so I, I do stumble here and there. But I found out that we needed some deliverance according to the um, pastors there and I wasn't familiar with that at all. You know, my only exposure to demons was really at the time uh, the exorcist <laughs> you know <laughs> which is not the best the best example <laughs> and um, I think for the world that that's theirs too for the most part because they're not they're not used to um, in the Western world to demons and the and the concept of demons as they are in the Eastern world now in the Eastern world, it's a given that there's demons. I mean, people believe in other forces. In fact, in South America, when I was in Belize, they called it um, bad wind, is what they call uh, a demonic force. And this young girl that li that I stayed with uh, and her mom, uh, she had a parrot, and there was a guy who wanted to buy the parrot. And she didn't want to give it to him because she loved her parrot, you know. So couple days later the parrot died he just suddenly t -t -t -t, and and they called it bad wind in other words it, w it was attacked by a demon so as we watched what was going on and we submitted to getting some deliverance there was a whole lot of growth going on in us in terms of learning what it was to um, to to do the works of the Lord because we were very concerned with helping other people and um, wanted to be part of all that. And yet we were still pretty broken ourselves and it takes time. As I said, sanctification is progressive. It's not a magic thing that happens at the cross. Um, but also I didn't realize that in, in applying the cross, you have to apply it also to your generations. For example, in Nehemiah 9, it talks about how the, the the Jews stood before the Lord for hours, confessing their sins and the sins of their fathers and their father's fathers. And um, the Lord showed me this as a model of, you know, getting gener healing for the uh, from generational sins. Um, and so there's repentance that is needed, just like you repent when you come to the cross, there's repentance needed for the generations in order, and you know, admitting that, you know, the generations did this or that, that's needed to get free and to apply the cross to um, those generational sins so that we don't have to carry them. Uh, and the Lord said that we wouldn't have to, you know, that a man would be responsible for his own sins and not not his his parents. So that's part of what it takes. and. When uh, I was talking about David Siemens and I mentioned the inner healing, it took me a while before um, before I got to a place where I was confronted by another believer um, who, know, who knew I needed help, who knew I needed some inner healing, 
but I didn't know what that was. And since my mother had been in uh, New Age, and I didn't want anything to do with any more demons, <laughs> you know, or get any more, I wanted to check it out, you know, like to be sure that what I was going to do would not be offensive to the Lord. I didn't want to do anything um, wrong. And um, I was reading word by a book called by Mer by Merlin Carruthers. It's called uh, "What's on Your Mind." I think that's what it is called. And it was a book for men who have trouble getting free of pornography and um, thinking about, you know, sexual thoughts. And there was a scripture there, you know, when it talks about Noah, about the people, their thoughts were to do evil continually, you know, and, their, and he used the word imaginations, their imaginations were to do evil. And the Lord said to me, so if they use their imaginations for evil, wouldn't it be okay to, to use your imagination for good? And I thought, well, yes, I would think so. But I have a hard time with imagining things, period, with visualizing things. So I just asked the Lord to give me vision for what he wanted to do and what he wanted to heal when this woman, you know, approached me. And um, finally, after the Lord, you know, confirmed to me, then I went ahead and I, she came to my house actually for healing. And she actually did that for four years every week, except for holidays, for hours she would spend with me and helping me through the demonic abuse that I had gone through at the hands of my stepfather and others. So I took that whole model, you know, for what she was doing very, very seriously and um, continued to, to work on getting healing. And at that time, I was really needing it because I had a lot of physical issues. I had fibromyalgia that was so bad. Uh, from viruses I'd had and other other things that um, my T cells were low, like somebody with AIDS uh, when I went to the doctor, to the immunologist. So I was suffering <laughs> terribly and unable to, to breathe very easily. I was having bronchitis like six times this one year. So her coming at the time she did was really miraculous and, and time the God's timing for me to be able to survive and as she came it wasn't something where she did some guidance uh, visual guidance or something with me it was more like we ask the Holy Spirit we wait on him for what he wants to show me that he wants to heal and if he brings up something from the past that then she would help me work through forgiveness for that very thing and, and ask God to help me with the forgiveness and oftentimes he would give me a vision of what he would do if he had been invited into that situation, you know, that I was bringing up. So as we did that, I kept getting freer and freer. I kept getting better and better. And so <clears throat> I was then able to get more freedom from the demons. Now, demons can be gotten rid of in a number of ways. So there isn't just one categorical way to cast out demons. Jesus showed the way in the word. That one's pretty obvious, that, that method, I'm just commanding him to go. But sometimes he uses the word. I've, I saw Rich Bueller stand up at a healing conference and begin to speak scripture and people just began to manifest all over the room, demons. The woman in front of me, who was Asian, just suddenly went into this back uh, contorted <clears throat> position and screaming and in a guttural voice, you know, of a demon. And the same thing happened when Francis McNutt sang in um, tongues. <clears throat> the same kind of thing happened as with Rich Bueller. So the Lord has a number of ways in which he can free people. It's not always just one way. Sometimes just reading the word uh, or hearing, you know, the Lord speak to you a certain word 
will free you. Sometimes in your dreams you can get healing. Sometimes um, it takes love, you know, from another human being. Um, I know Judy told me, my spiritual mom, that a lot of times when people get a lot of healing, the thing that would cement it is if they had a partner, you know, who then was very loving, would um, would also help restore the person because then they're getting unconditional love that that they didn't have as a child. So there's numerous ways in which God gives deliverance and brings healing to us. And it doesn't always have to be somebody's model, you know, of what to do. So the bottom line in healing and in deliverance, um, like when she was doing healing with me, was to always rely on listening to the Holy Spirit. And if you ask the Holy Spirit questions, eventually he's going to answer you. Now, sometimes people say to me, oh, I can't hear. Well, what if you ask and you don't hear? Well, you can start out that way, but if you continue seeking the Lord, he's going to answer you because it says, my sheep hear my voice and they, um, it, they follow me. So <sighs> he intends that for every believer, not just some believers. He wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to be more dependent on him so that we can hear him and get our instructions and advice from him on what to do and how to do it. And there was a time when I was doing deliverance with a young gal that was uh, SRA uh, victim and um, her father was a high level satanic, high, you know, high priest. And I heard the Lord three times say to me, get, you know, her boyfriend, I don't want to use the names, um, to say, to profess his love to her because they're planning to get married. And so when I did that and uh, obeyed the Lord and asked Jim to come in, or now I, now I forgot, um, to profess his love to her, he did that and it broke. Whatever demon was blocking her that was wrapped around her, somebody, a friend who was there saw wrapped around her spine, it broke that thing and she was freed and she cried and cried and cried and and um, was released from what had hold of her. So the thing is that we can't just, you know, sometimes when you're teaching classes on, on deliverance, then you, you give a certain model, you know, just to cover bases that, that we think of all these things, you know, so that people ha have some uh, wisdom from our experience. But that doesn't mean that God's going to always move in the same way and that's basically what I want to say and that's all I'm going to do in this one so God bless you